So thanks for being here. Um, we're very lucky to have uh, lots of um, guests here to give you insights and uh, uh, new information about funding and about uh, applications. Um, and that hasn't finished yet. So I'm going to ask Ollie if Ollie might introduce um, our next guest speakers. Uh, we'll hear from them and we'll also have a little bit of time for you to ask questions of them at the end of this as well. Ollie, let me pass across to you. Yeah, amazing. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, we're really delighted to be joined by um, three more guest speakers. So we have um, Medina Kara, who is a Director of Research and Innovation at Fight for Sight. Um, Kath Thumbs, who is Research Programme Manager at the Royal Academy of Engineering. And Tracy Pollard, who is the Research Programme Lead at RNID, or the Royal National Institute for Deaf People. Um, so I think the plan is for them each to provide just a very quick overview of some of their upcoming related funding opportunities. Um, I've been very boring and we've we've done this in alphabetical order. So assuming I've got my alphabet right, then Medina at Fight for Sight is um, first up. So Medina, I'll pass over to you. You should be able to share your screen, but um, we have all of your presentations if needed. Thank you very much, Ollie. I'm just sharing at the moment. Hopefully you can all see Looking that. Looking good. We yeah. can. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, just um, large. So first of all, thank you so much to Ollie and Sanjay for the opportunity to, to share our funding opportunities. And we've been in discussions for a while with, with Dunhill in terms of you know shared interest, because one of our interests is how we can collaborate to bring uh, more attention to the need for increased site research in, in the UK. So um, thank you, first of all. So I've got a few slides here just outlining um, some key points from Fight for Sight around our funding opportunities, but also our recent merger with Vision Foundation. So over the last five years, um, we have funded uh, 133 grants at a value of about 12.3 million pounds. And that's varied year to year. Um, as many funders through COVID, we, we sort of consolidated and made sure to give costed extensions rather than any new grants and also recent cost of living uplifts for our PhD students. So we make sure we can retain uh, sort of the next generation of research leaders in, in this space. Uh, we funded 115 uh, lead applicants and 74 early career researchers across sort of 42 institutions UK wide. So recently we merged with the Vision Foundation um, officially as of the 1st of April. And essentially, by bringing these two organizations together, we have always focused on, on medical and scientific research. They have been a social impact funder, mainly focused on um, in London. But this offers the opportunity to really combine funding scientific research and innovative services for pe uh, blind and partially sighted uh, people and to expand that uh, UK wide and in the case of social impact. And the idea for that was to leverage further investment in the sector, accelerate uh, research and clinical progress and really improving the quality of life for people living um, with sight loss. And so essentially we aim to build a better world for blind and partially sighted people. And also there is overlapping interests when you talk about the science and the social impact. So for example, in terms of prevention, we know we can't actually do that alone and it's a holistic effort that's needed across uh, across the board. And so we, we're excited to be able to do that, I think more in the future as well. Um, how we ensure our scientific research contributes to towards our aim of building a better world for people living with sight loss, we essentially fund the highest quality clinical and non-clinical research, uh, much in line with um, our colleagues on the line from Dunhill. We, undertake significant peer review of our applications that come through. We have a grants assessment panel that has uh, both site loss researchers, but also methodologists, population science. Um, and we also uh, make sure that we, we access international peer reviews to make sure that we're funding the best uh, research. We have priority areas across uh, different um, the, the, the patient pathway. So in, in our last strategy period, it was very much clinical focused on age-related macular degeneration, glaucoma, inherited eye diseases, and multimorbidity. And whilst we have not stopped that as an interest, we felt that we also had an opportunity to fund uh, across the pathway um, that would make more sense, I think, to partition things that way. So as part of our new strategy, it's around increasing understanding of how eye diseases and conditions start and develop, uh, preventing eye diseases, um, and conditions starting and enabling better and earlier diagnosis. 
and also developing new and improved treatments for eye diseases. And really fundamentally to our, our cause is also making sure that we increase um, vision research capacity across the UK. And that's at all stages. So both through attracting early graduates into undertaking a PhD, uh, supporting postdoctoral researchers through our project grants, and also reintroducing our fellowships in, in, in the next financial year as well. So at the moment, a lot of our funding calls are actually open. So if anybody is interested, do take a look at our funding um, website. And uh, actually, it, it sort of goes quite nicely in line with some of the conversations that we've just been listening about, uh, too. So we have a project grant call at the moment, which is a two stage call. The first um, stage is closing um, on Wednesday, 21st of June, so not, not far to go. Uh, that is very much around an abstract stage one application. Uh, that then goes through uh, internal review with our grants assessment panel and a triage panel, and then full applications are invited in about late September. They are open to clinical and non-clinical research scientists wishing to undertake research in, in all fields of ophthalmology and vision research. And I should sort of stress that we're really open to people who've never applied to us. We are very keen for people to come into vision research. So if you're in an aligned field, um, we have we, we would be very interested in, in, in receiving applications from you. Our funding currently for this call is up to £250,000 for up to three years for each grant. Um, and they really are for research projects that are hypothesis driven, innovative and involve high quality scientific methodologies. Um, and they have some preliminary data to support them. And again, very interested in collaborative, multidisciplinary teams uh, and being able to, to do that. And again, very similar to Dunhill, very interested in supporting um, sort of first time principal investigators as well and uh, with uh, a strong team around them of mentorship. So hopefully, you know, I think all funders working together and sort of seeing the need to support that is, 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 is sort of showing across the, across the board. Um, we also have our four year PhD studentship call uh, live. I should mention this is the first year we've moved to a four year studentship. So through um, some of the work I've been working on to develop the new research strategy, we had a lot of feedback from uh, both our sort of funded supervisors, as well as our current cohort of three years um, students, that actually that fourth year would be very beneficial, both to tie up some loose ends in the labs, but also essentially to allow them to publish, to present their work, to disseminate it, and to be more likely to stay in the field if they actually are able to work up their next application, perhaps for a fellowship. So we have um, launched that, and the uh, deadline for their applications is of July. We've moved also to a one stage this year for this competition, just so that we could align it for the academic year. So that means that outcomes will, will be, you know, made by sort of December or announced in December, and it allows um, those supervisors to actually recruit in early 2024 for people to start in, in, in September. Um, so that's really helpful. For us, it's the application is made by the actual potential PhD supervisor outlining a project the training environment and how it will lead to a PhD. And then that goes through our, our same systems of peer review and grants assessment panel. Um, we have increased our stipends. We have also brought um, comparable uh, information across. So in, in the past, we let supervisors essentially outline what the stipends would be and they were different institutions. But we think it's very important that every any fight for site PhD student actually has the same amount of stipend. Um, and so the only difference really is whether it's got London waiting or not. So that's for up to 135,000 over the four years for anyone outside London and 143,000 in London. Um, and again, open to anything in vision research or in a aligned condition. And essentially that also covers consumables, travel. We're really encouraging um, at least one international conference, uh, usually in the fourth year, but very much open to people being able to, to, to do that. Um, and very importantly, our new research strategy will also create a cohort of these people uh, coming together a bit more often. Um, very quickly, we have other funding awards that might be of interest to colleagues. We're shortly going to launch our small grant awards. And I think that ties in really well with the comment earlier, which was about you when you get a, a feedback from a grant and you've not been successful, and one of that is that you need a little bit more preliminary data or something, that's the scheme that's really there for that. It's up to £15,000 over a year to essentially generate some proof of concept preliminary data. Uh, very nicely focused now on early career researchers up to lecturer level, because we know that makes a real difference to them in terms of getting um, early stage funding. We also fund uh, something in 
collaboration with the Royal College of Ophthalmologists that is to encourage uh, ophthalmologists to, to get involved in research. And essentially that's enough to buy a day out of clinic um, for a year to, again, generate some preliminary data, get involved in research. And hopefully that means that they both obviously can carry on in, in clinical research research um, and perhaps even want to go on to undertake a PhD or MD at a later stage. And to that in mind, we then have the next stage, which we fund with the Medical Research Council um, for people, for clinicians to undertake PhDs in uh, vision research. Um, so that's a very whistle-stop tour. All the information is on our website. Happy to take questions in the chat or by follow-up email. Um, so thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much indeed, Medina. A round of applause to you from all of us here. Thank you. I'm going to move this swiftly on to Kath, uh, and then we'll see if we can take some questions after we've had Kath and uh, and Tracy. Kath, are you here? Yeah, I'm I know here. you're here somewhere. Um, there you I'm are. Here. Hi, Kath. Do you want to share some slides? I will. Let me just uh, just get this from the beginning. Let's share these. Okay, I'm pressing share now. Yes, it's coming through. Yep, we've got that. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, am I ready to go? Yep, please. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting the Academy. Um, we're pleased to introduce some of our, a range of our research programmes and highlight some of the current opportunities available. Um, the Academy um, is a membership a fellowship a charity. We have the National Engineering Policy Centre here. We have an enterprise hub um, here too. And our, um, and our uh, aims and scope are to harness the power of engineering and technology to build a sustainable society and an inclusive economy that works for everyone. So um, I'm going to... Sorry, I'm just trying to move my slides on. Seems to be stuck. Okay, so the Academy's research programs are one small part of what the Academy do, but I'm here today to talk to you about those. Uh, they offer a comprehensive support of fostering long-term collaborations between academia and industry. And we consider engineering in its broadest sense, encompassing a wide range of diverse fields. And we welcome applications in medical engineering and bioengineering research. If you're interested in any of the programmes but are unsure whether your project falls in the Academy's remit, please contact us. I think our research email is on this next slide and it's in a few other slides and I'll put it in the chat later on. So this is um, to illustrate the sort of remit of um, research schemes that we have from early mid to establish, but today we're just going to focus on the three that are either open or are going to currently open. We have the research fellowship for early career stage. For mid-career stages, we've got the industrial fellowship schemes that are open. And for our um, mid to established researchers, we've got the research chair, which is at professorial level, and the research and the senior research fellowships that are at reader or lectureship level. And going into those a little bit more detail. Um, there's a, a bit of a spec on the on the slide, but um, the research fellowships this is the early stage uh, awards. These also include engineering for development research fellowship. So this call also supports projects that contribute to the sustainable develop development of a low or low to middle income country. Also for this scheme. We are in discussions with UK-based medical charities to co-fund medical engineering research. And applicants that are in the remit of these charities will be considered at interview stage to confirm their interest at being co-funded. So I think there's also a tick box on the application form to say if that's something that you would consider. The industrial fellowships, they're opening soon. Um, and their closing date will be confirmed, but it'll be late August, early September. So they, this supports an academic into industry or the other way around. And we're particularly keen to encourage more of the industry into academia route. 
and medical engineering pro projects are also particularly welcome. Industrial organisations here can be university spin outs and, of course, SMEs. Um, the research chairs, this is at the later, the professorial level and senior research fellowships at reader lectureship level. These include match funding from an industrial partner over the five years. And in some circumstances, um, the industrial sponsor can be another funding body, such as a charity or a government department. Again, any questions around this? I've just highlighted some things that might be of interest today. But if there are um, any, you know, if you want any further information, we have all of our projects, um, all of our programs on our website. And we have a how to apply, a guidance document, FAQs, and details of previous award awardees. So we encourage you to contact us using our research at reng.org.uk. Um, and we can direct your inquiry to the, the right program manager. So finally, there are just a few things I want to mention that are range of support that we would offer. So for um, applicants during the application program process we have an access mentoring program or scheme so this is for applicants from persistently underrepresented groups within uk engineering people who are eligible would be uh, women black people and disabled people and it provides a one-off monitoring mon mentoring session with a fellow from the academy to go through your application and offer support. The closing date for these are often four weeks prior to the actual scheme closing date to give you time to um, link up with the mentor. And um, so please check that. And um, just to talk to um, something that was mentioned by Andy Clegg earlier about bulletproofing your application, particularly for um, so this 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 is this is where this would apply. So you might not necessarily want your mentor might not necessarily want to see a full application form, but it's kind of um, it would be a good person to check it and and do that final um, pick up and pick up anything that the reviewers might um, might pick up. Um, then once you are a, um, a, an awardee, which we hope you're, you're all considering. Um, you will be um, have a mentor support from an academy fellow to advise um, to offer advice on research and career development. Um, we have training opportunities such as science communication, and we have just established an awardee excellence community, which is a network of all of our awardees and alumni. Um, so this introduces um, some of our programs, but the, 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 the academy deliver a much broader range. We have international programs. Am I coming to the end? Um, we have international programs, education programs, for example, visiting professors from industry into academia. We have Eng Engineering X, which is an international program that works on engineering safety. And we have poli policy fellowships and grants. And just to highlight, uh, one of our um, awardees, uh, Professor Keith Matheson at University of Strathclyde, who is working on brain in interfacing technologies to treat a number of conditions, including vision and hearing loss. And we have made an animation. It's, it's 90 seconds. It, I haven't got the time now to show you, um, but it's there in the slide deck. And I'll put um, the animation link in the chat. And um, a critical conversation held between Keith Matheson and another one of our awardees on how neurotechnology can reshape our lives. And I'll also put into the chat um, um, our website, our email address and our engineering hub, um, which is um, um, which has research programs and um, uh, sorry, not research programs, which has grant programs and opportunities for um, people uh, looking to commercialize. So I hope I've done that in the time. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Kath. A round of applause to you from all of us. Thank you very much. Uh, very insightful. And thank you for putting in those links into the chat. That would I will be do that now. People. 
later and to remind people that uh, we are recording this as well so uh, that will be available to everybody to uh, find all these links later as well there it is. so our final um uh, guest speaker for this morning is tracy tracy pollard from uh, the rnid tracy yes there you are are you sharing slides uh, yes i will be i'm just thank you stop my video as well just because my internet's thank been a bit you. cranky this morning yep yeah, I think the, the internet is cranky on the whole these days. I think we're asking too much of for it. Uh, here we go. Yes, that's coming up nicely. If you go to presenter mode. Then... Is that working? Fabulous. That okay. looks great. Thank you. Okay, so um, <clears throat> today I'm just going to tell you about the research funding that's available from RNID. We don't actually currently have any calls open, so um, I'll just quickly take you through our whole funding program. So... Just as a brief introduction to us, we're the national charity that supports the 12 million people in the UK who are deaf, have hearing loss or tinnitus. Um, and one of the ways that we do this is by funding research to find treatments for hearing loss and tinnitus. So just to expand on that, we fund quite broadly within the hearing and tinnitus fields, but all of the research that we fund will fall under one of our three main areas, which is preventing hearing loss, restoring hearing and silencing tinnitus. So under our preventing hearing loss category, uh, we support research to better understand the molecular and cellular mechanisms that underlie hearing loss, and also to advance the development and testing of treatments to prevent any type of hearing loss, um, whether it affects the peripheral or the central auditory system. And then under our restoring hearing category, we support research that would advance the discovery, development or testing of any drug, gene or cell-based therapy to repair damage to any part of the auditory system to improve hearing. And under this category, um, we also support research to improve the quality of hearing gained through medical devices, such as hearing aids and cochlear implants, so that people can hear better now. And then finally, under our silencing tinnitus category, we support research to improve our understanding of the biological mechanisms involved in tinnitus and to discover and test approaches to reduce the perception of tinnitus. And for each of these three areas, um, we also include research that will lead to better diagnostics, preclinical models and outcome measures that can be used to evaluate new treatments. So that's what we fund. Um, and now I'll quickly uh, cover how we fund research. So we fund research through five, five grant schemes, and there's a mix of project and people funding. Um, we fund mostly at the basic or the discovery stage of research, but we also fund some early stage translational research as well. So our three project grant schemes are open to researchers worldwide and the discovery and translational research grants are our two main schemes and they fund projects of up to three years. And as their name suggests, they fund at different stages of the research pathway. And there are a couple of other differences as well. So SMEs that are working in the hearing and tinnitus space are welcome to apply for our translational grants, um, but they aren't eligible for our discovery grants, although they can be collaborators on those grants. And then the other difference is that we don't fund medical devices research through our translational grant scheme. And then our Innovation Seed Fund is a pilot project grant scheme that allows researchers to generate preliminary data to support their new ideas so that they can then go on to apply for larger grants of funding. And again, these grants are open to SMEs. And then our Future Leaders Programme um, comprises the grants we fund that support people. And it's part of our work to increase the number of hearing and tinnitus researchers working in the UK. And so as such, these grants are restricted to UK researchers. Um, I think our PhD studentships are fairly self-explanatory. Uh, they're single PhD grants, they're not a block grant. And then our fellowship scheme is aimed at postdoctoral researchers who are beginning the process of establishing their independence. So they're essentially a first step along the way. Um, I won't go through this slide in great detail, um, but it just this is a, a slide gives an overview of the five schemes we fund with key dates for each one. So when it launches, um, when the deadline tends to be and when funding decisions are typically announced. And I've also included a sort of friendly URL for each scheme, <clears throat> um, although I'll also give you the link to our main funding page at the end. So if you go onto our website, you'll find all the information about each scheme on its own dedicated page. So things like value, eligibility, application and review process, and so on. Um, and I will just flag that the discovery and fellowship schemes are currently under review. So the details for these schemes may, it's not certain, but they may change before we launch the next call. And then finally, if you'd like us to let you know when we launch new grant calls, you can sign up to our mailing list 
uh, simply by emailing us and asking to be added. And then I'd also like to flag our hearing therapeutics initiative. So it doesn't involve any funding, but it aims to build connections and partnerships across hearing research. So from academics to clinicians, um, from biotech and pharma companies to investors to speed up the development of treatments and remove some of the barriers in the way. Um, and as part of that, we also produce a bi-monthly newsletter that has all the latest news about clinical trials and other developments in the field. And if you'd like to find out more or join our network, which is free, then visit the link on this slide. So yeah, that was a really brief overview of our funding program. Um, but if you want more information, uh, you can find it on our website at the link on this slide. Um, and you can also contact us by email if you have any questions. Thank you very much for listening. Tracy, thank you very much indeed. A round of applause to you from us all. Thank you very much. Thank you to all our guest speakers. Um, I thank you for putting links into the uh, into the chat to various things. Uh, I'm going to avoid opening the floor to questions now. I haven't, can't see any questions in the in the chat box apart from the one there that uh, Medina has answered directly with a very simple yes, absolutely. Um, so, uh, but you know where these where these uh, people are if you need to contact them. As I say, all the details will be uh, circulated uh, for uh, contact details for our guest speakers uh, after this event.